Bienvenidos a Flow Design Architects, una compañía que trabaja para ti y por ti. Gracias por sintonizar. Entonces ahora vamos a ver tres proyectos de residencia que hicimos, que tienen mucho valor sentimental para mí, para la oficina, para los clientes, claro, definitivamente. Pero tiene una, una historia irónica, de hecho, porque de la forma en la que yo conocí a estos clientes, yo todavía no me había graduado de la universidad, eh, estaba trabajando en una compañía de, de ingeniería civil y pues conocí a esa persona y luego dejé de trabajar en la, en la compañía de ingeniería civil y me topé con esa persona de nuevo y yo estaba haciendo Uber, yo era un Uber driver en ese tiempo. Eh, estaba ya terminando la universidad y ya casi casi con mi licencia de arquitecto y lo conocí a él y a su esposa se iban de viaje y lo llevé, lo llevé al aeropuerto me acuerdo como si fuese hoy y le dije que algún día yo voy a tener mi licencia y que algún día yo voy a tener una oficina y que algún día si Dios quiere vamos a, vamos a trabajar juntos luego poco tiempo pasó y me llama y, y, y yo creo que fue el año y ya yo tenía la licencia y ya Flow estaba siendo empezado, ya estaba creciendo, ya estaba caminando. Eh, estábamos en el sótano de, lo, de, de donde yo vivía. Y me llama, me pregunta, oh, que quiero hacer una casa. Pero nunca nos pusimos de acuerdo con el precio. Luego llegó la... Esos tiempos en los que estaban trancados, <ríe> que no podíamos salir. Me llama de nuevo y me necesitaba para algo y pues me presté a su favor, le ayudé. Eran unas inspecciones que había que hacerse y las hice. Y luego me llama de nuevo a los seis meses, me habla de este proyecto, un development, un desarrollo bien grande de construcción de tres, tres cuatro casas. Uh, ahora vamos a ver tres, pero son cuatro. Hay otra que está siendo diseñada ahora mismo. Y yo lo primero que le digo es, pero ¿me está llamando en serio o, o, o es mentira? Porque Muchas de las llamadas nunca llevan a un, un acuerdo. Y yo no, esta vez sí. Y inmediatamente vi que firmó el contrato, mandó el depósito, llegó allá mismo a la oficina mía. Y esto es a, a, a una hora de camino, o so, manejó una hora y veinte minutos para ir allá. Y, y pues el, el proyecto se dio, se empezó. Y tiene mucho valor sentimental por esa historia de que, ¿verdad? En ese tiempo que yo no era nada, que no tenía nada. Era un estudiante como muy corriente, latino, eh, minoría, ¿verdad? Y poder mirar hacia adelante y decir, yo voy a tener algún día, yo voy a hacer algún día. Suena egocéntrico, pero en verdad hay que, hay que ponerse metas. Cada quien tiene que ponerse metas como individuo. Y tener uh, el equipo de respaldo que creció al mismo momento que yo crecía también, de Flow, uh, le agregó mucho más. Por ejemplo, tener... Una de mis personas favoritas, hay dos, en el aspecto de diseño en Flow, que son Julio Gutiérrez y Ivonne Pérez. Ivonne Pérez se encargó de trabajar en ese proyecto desde el comienzo con su paciencia, con su sutileza, con su amor, con su delicadeza. Y, y pues, The, uh, The Ryan es un poquito intenso y claro en lo que quiere, de hecho intimidante, hasta con su nombre, tenemos que decirlo bien, The Ryan. Si no lo dice bien hay problema, pero... Y que él sí, pues, que ella es una, una, una dulzura de, de, de mujer, esposa de él. Entonces, fue una combinación perfecta y se crearon tres artefactos que no, no puedo, no sé ni cómo llamarlos, son tres obras de arte. Y eso es lo que vamos a ver ahora. So we spoke about this project. We're gonna now go take a look inside. We have the Rias here with me and that one for Tonavon Flow Design Architects. Let's go Let's take a look. So we are inside this space and as soon as you walk in, double height. Amazing. What do you think, the Rias? 
floor to ceiling, about 22 feet. Um, yeah, I mean, we wanted to create that drama, double yeah. doors coming in through the front door, um, black on the exterior, black on the interior. Amazing. And then lighting comes all the way through. It flows Correct. all the way through. Correct. We have this connection. Clear sight lines going to that quad slider. Um, and then it brings the inside, outside, outside, inside. That's right. You got it. Love that. So, and then this element, which is the focal point. The focal point is the anchor of the house. Um, people talk a lot about open concept, but this is a different kind of open concept. Where we have our kitchen, dining, sort of connector between living and dining. Yeah. So, and that's uh, all going all around. You can actually see through it. So that anchor, what was the inspiration for that tone and that color? Well, you want to have a feature wall, but you want to have it be intentional and still be uh, functional for the space. So we wanted to have a fireplace. Yeah, we could have cost effective way. We'll put it on the exterior wall, straight shot the direct vent it out. But instead we took it all the way up through the roof, put it to kind of define dining room, living room, but you're still able to marry both spaces. It, walk it is beautiful. Let's take a look at the kitchen. So here we have the golden and black that you mentioned before. And even the stone has the golden texture in it. 100%. So that's, that's beautiful. How, it's, it's magical how you were able to put it all together and get that. But it comes in and it looks intentional, bold, and clear. Yes. Um, there, I, don't think, I can't think of anything that anybody would need on their kitchen. No, we got the pot filler. You have double ovens. So instead of having them being stacked to left or right, you know, built in, we did a 48 inch range, two ovens. I think there's six or seven burners on there. All oh, the good wow. stuff that I don't know how to use. Um, 48 <laughs> inch range hood. Um, and again, oversized island. It's a 10 foot island. Um, you're able to sit four to five. Very yeah, let's take a look at the living room. So the living room, again, are connected by this fireplace. Correct. Everything put together around this very big fireplace. Correct. The openings are still very generous. It's not like a little window yes, opening yes, or a door yes. opening. It's all the way floor to ceiling. Far beyond the minimal. Wow. So here you can just enjoy watching the Patrix play, you know, nice space. 100%. Uh, feature wall, natural light comes in, having a private conversation. We were talking before about how each space is intentional. Yes. Each space has its own moment, its own story to tell. Um, and sound travels through but it still flows and it's not distracting yeah. you could be watching a game here it doesn't matter semi-private a lot of windows to bring in a lot of natural light but again you know if you want to entertain here you know and then you want to go into the dining room or in the kitchen uh it just really works and it has that yeah. nice flow you asked me what my favorite part of the house was earlier but what's your favorite part of the house uh all of it uh that my name's attached to it you know that's my favorite part. <laughs> i love that i love that <laughs> i actually Ooh. love the basement honestly to tell you, you love the, the basement love the basement it's not a typical basement it's such a weird thing he <laughs> loves the basement we probably need to go take a we're going to see the basement yes yeah we, we should probably go but let's go up also and enjoy more of how that process of going upstairs it does feel like a sort of a bridge right right you see that connector between this space Correct. and this space nice beautiful lights um beautiful lights oh my goodness those are and just the, the the detail on the craftsmanship right so we could have just went with a straight you know for this arm rail similar to this but you know you want to use the goosenecks you know and make sure you marry that on both sides that's the right same thing here so um all those little small details that go all the distance you know and um this has become a feature of most of our uh designs actually flow Ever since we designed these houses, all of these houses, mm -hmm. we became enamored with the double height space. Yes. So we try to apply it as much I love as possible. That. We became enamored with this feature space right here. Like, it's a bonus space. Some people might want an awesome. office space or something else. We're like, no, 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 no. Right. This is another semi-private gathering space. Um, you need to do a phone call. You need to do something. You get out of your master bedroom. You can chill out here and enjoy Correct. it. Um, and you don't have to be part of any of the conversations down there or in Correct. here. So Correct. You, you keep the privacy. So that, that's beautiful. It, it, I mean, I, this is a stage right here. You know, you can use this uh, uh, in many ways. 100%. And then the master. Oof. This is something special. A lot of space. A lot of space. Lots of space. And you still have the eight foot doors, 10 foot ceilings. Typically, you wouldn't see that on a second floor, right? Yeah. They'll scale it back, they'll scale it down. But that's not really the intent and direction we wanted with this. We wanted to carry that drama all throughout the house, so all throughout the building. Really tall doors, 
and ceilings that bring in all the light and that's my favorite part of the house right, right. light how the light moves all around the sun sets on the way there um spacious master yes. generous closets i mean cl the closet you can you can live closet on that side yeah. you know and then you also have um french doors french doors into your shower which has a his and her shower head oh uh, look, at as well. look at this look at this look at this this is not your average <laughs> bathroom i mean this is big Correct. well sized oversized nice black uh, hardware all throughout all the Correct. pictures and everything to continue to have that drama right like the dark and black That's and it. white they play off each other like you say and then we have the privacy of the toilet which is not the first thing you want to see <laughs> you have it you have it at the perfect spot so that you don't have to worry about it but this is super spacious super friendly and uh exactly what you wanted to build a community like this i mean this is this is again has your name attached to it we're excited um, about it how many bedrooms we have upstairs uh you have four bedrooms total four bedrooms four total. beds two and a half baths uh just over 4100 square feet including the basement wow and you like the basement so much why do you like I the do. basement so you want uh, well we're absolutely going to take you down there but i love <laughs> the basement because it's not typical you would never see it finished in this fashion and we tried a new product, first time we ever tried it, and it's outstanding, and I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I don't see on Instagram you're posting you that every it. day. Okay. I'm like, he's crazy about these things. He's gonna want to put this everywhere now. So let's go downstairs. Let's show. Let's show you the basement. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what he has there. Basement. Vamanos. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. This is uh, my favorite space. This is my domain. If this was my house, this is where I would be, right? So you want to entertain. Again, we know that it's in the basement, so I didn't want to have a lot of the dark contrast, right? We want to keep it light and bright. So light floors. This is an epoxy floor. Seamless, no seams. This isn't tile. It isn't marble. It's just an epoxy that's finished to look like a marble. Um, and if there was ever any water issues, just a squeegee and goes away. Yeah. Just like that. So it reminds me of the stone work that we have for Correct. the kitchen and all that. Correct. And, and how is this done? It's something that's applied and treated. It's like a hard piece, right? Like it's hundred percent. So it's a, you could never really make it again. It will never look exactly like this. Cause it's again, the flow, right? You let the stuff go yeah. how, exactly how it wants to go. Um, it's a stage. They grind it down after they grind it. Then they come and put a, um, a waterproof membrane on top. Then it's multiple metallic covers, metallic colors that they then swirl in. Um, and it's like a four or five day process. So this right here makes the space. Yes. Uh, and, and also the ceilings are pretty good here too. What do we have for ceilings? So, so again, going back to what we talked about earlier, right? So if we did the beam pocket, the ceiling from here to here would have been probably six, seven. And that really wouldn't have made the spaces um, spacious and as open as it is right now. That's so, right. Um, but roughly eight, feet so oh, give or take yeah for oh, a bad. basement so this could be a whole entertainment space i mean you could put your pool table you could put a mini bar you can have all that stuff in here it looks great have access to the outside too so if you remember on the original plan right the original plan this was actually supposed to be the exterior door was going to be here and that was going to be open to the elements and i said no, 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 I don't want to do that. And again, that was my idea, but I said, I don't want to do that because I don't want to deal with water issues. I don't want to have to, you know, this is New England. This is an exterior door, snow falling, all that's going to be in here. Water's going to ultimately penetrate in the basement. Wow. So we created a dog house, finished another separate stairs. This year means of egress to get up to the pool that hopefully they put in once they uh, purchase it. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is beautiful. You knew right now I see why you love it so much. Now you It's get just it. peace, light. Yes softness yeah. you know you can furnish this furnish this in any way you want it's gonna look great anyway so this is beautiful the man cave that's right that's right all right so here we are uh one of the projects that we were fortunate to work on my name is darwin fortuna and i'm one of the principals of flow design architects and i am here with somebody that doesn't need introduction but go ahead and introduce the yourself. man the myth the legend darius gregory with gregory investment group certainly glad to have you here this afternoon um welcome to mikasa yeah, I love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the journey to get to this project. So I know, um, and we can go way back. We met when I was in at school. I was a student working at one of those civil engineering companies and we connected. And uh, I don't know if you remember that project in Salem, right? I do, I do, I do. Um, it's been a long journey, man. I mean, from, it seems like it was just yesterday, but it was five, six years ago. Um, 
you were still, I believe you were in, uh, still in school at that point. I, was. I don't know what institution you were in, but it yeah. um, doesn't really matter. But you were basically doing the uh, floor plans for, I believe it was fill in the blank. Who's the guy that? Aaron uh, Marini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crook. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that guy. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. You can't love all of us, right? So, uh, but, but, but at that time, uh, I'll tell you the things that I picked up from you and, and, and the team, your team. You guys are so ambitious. You guys have a clear vision for what it is that you're looking for. Um, even if you don't know exactly how to get there, you, you have a clear path. So that project, and that was early, 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 early on. And I think that that was matched when I first, uh, uh, I saw you after a little while, we didn't connect in anything, and I, I picked you up, and I was your Uber driver, remember? <laughs> the irony in that, right? Yeah, so at that time, I remember I had like business cards, and I was telling you, I'm getting right. this thing this flow thing going and you're like oh you know we'll, we'll talk and we tried several times to connect the numbers didn't work out the deals didn't right. work out and then um and then on this one you called me and i knew you were 100 percent working with me because uh you showed up the next day with a with a signed contract and 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 a Money deposit and so. oh yeah oh yeah that's how you know i'm official and it's ready to uh ready to get it done it's so on that, in hand. on that and i immediately was like wow this is ambitious so three three houses actually four houses right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're in one of them right now and we we got grinding we got going but you came with a real real clear picture for what it is that you wanted and um you know the team yvonne perez julio gutierrez all of us working on that but Tell me about your experience, and, and then we'll talk exactly about what we have right here, right? Well, so. well, well we kind of alluded to it earlier, right? So the journey was it started off with fix and flips. You know, that was kind of my comfort zone. That's why I felt comfortable. Um, that particular project was a two-family condo conversion, uh, complete gut. We went in there. Uh, I think we had allotted maybe like 400000 for that renovation. Ended up being 20% higher than that. Wow. Uh, but at the time, the market was so strong, we were able to still realize uh, a generous return at the end of the day when the um, two condos were conveyed. Fast forward, you know, sitting down at the table, I was residing in Salem and I said, hey, Kels, you know, we could build a house easy for our family. Like that, like that's okay, but that's not real ambitious. It's not um, really what... Um, putting my kind of stamp on it. So I'm like, why don't we build a house for us, but do it in a community, within a community, name the street after us and start to build our legacy. Wait a minute, you're telling me that all of those things that, that you, you said that mm -hmm. back then? Yes, 100%. And it was just pure, you know, being fearless, seeing the vision, willing to execute the vision. And when somebody tells you no, you figure out a way that you can get them to tell you yes. And there was a lot of that. Um, I could start with um, when we first bought this house, we sold a house that we renovated beautifully in Salem, moved here. My wife's hometown is North Attleboro. Um, so it made sense to set up shop. But I saw this opportunity, 10 acres, single family house, built in 94, preliminary approvals to do a five unit subdivision, um, five home subdivision. I'm like, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is it right here. Let's do it. So deep negotiations back and forth. We were able to get it as is. Um, and it's all public record, right? So we bought it for 630. That's right. right. Uh, the market has appreciated since then. Um, went through the whole approval process. Took about two and a half to three years, believe it or not, to get through approvals. There was tons of speed bumps. We dealt with the natural heritage and endangered species um, division for the state uh, because we have threatened species that were in their priority habitat. So there were tons of hurdles. We had to jump over that. But finally, we got our comprehensive management permit. We were able to start erecting and building. And hence, now we're staying, uh, standing in the, front, uh, the first build, 10 Gregory Way. And it uh, feels great. Yeah, so, so wow, that was, a, that was quick. It, it just shows how clear yeah. the path has been and the purpose, because you remember every single detail of that. So when you called me, you had already gone through a lot. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, eh, or nay, you were like, we're going to work together. And I remember I picked up the phone saying, is this going to be a deal? We're going to get out of here with a deal. That was the, that was the way, right. you know, I'm go we're going to design those houses together 
and that's it. You know, we're, we're, this is this is the last call that I have with you where right. we don't walk out. Although we did something else in in, in Swamp's We, we question, have, yeah. but it wasn't the same skill, right? No, it's yeah. all small things here and there. You know, it's kind of like you know specialty. Like, hey, I need you to do serve for a construction administration because the building inspector doesn't want to do his job because we're in the midst of COVID. So you were able to fill that. That's board. right. That's um, right. You know, but again, this was kind of like. It goes back, right? So you know what you know, you know who you know. And when you get comfortable, you don't necessarily want to branch out and take a risk, especially in this industry where it's like sometimes people can say they're going to deliver. And they don't necessarily deliver, right? So I didn't know fully if this was in your scope and if you would be able to hit it yeah. on the park. And 100% you did. And I knew that spot on um, after this build. And that's why you have my business today and moving forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, but it was a journey for all of us too. Because I, I'll tell you, these are the... This is the biggest like endeavor for us, for Flo, honestly. Right. I mean, we've do, when it comes to build outs, you know, like we've done 18 unit buildings and things like that. We've done 12 unit buildings, but each house has its own world and right. there's all these details, right? Uh, oftentimes those big developments where you have apartments and things like that, it's copy and paste. It's the same thing, pretty much the same, same layout. This one's, each house was to be different in every way possible and have his own charm and touch. Right. Every one of them, we didn't just copy and paste the plan. Correct. You know, there were, there were foundation footprints that we have to Correct. comply with and tweak them to still give this, you know, the life that he has right now, um, which, which you guys will see through every, every aspect, you know, the facade, the touches with the stone, all of those elements. But um, again, I must say that it wasn't, I wasn't, threatened by the approach. Like if somebody comes in to me and says, well, I have a $20 million deal for you, you know, it might, it might get me a little nervous, mm -hmm, right? Because mm -hmm. that's not my comfort zone. But this one didn't get me wary at all because I, again, the confidence you bring with you and, and you know, Kelsey, both of you, the mm -hmm. combination, I was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be a fun process. We're gonna get through all of this. They know the kind of windows they like. They know the ceiling hyzer. I mean, you had, you know, and we have a four-step process, but you really had every one of those elements from the four-step process already thought out. Yeah. Step one, existing. Well, the existing is the foundation. Here it is. And here's all the survey plans. Right. Then step two, envision. Here is exactly what we want and how we want it. Every step of the way. And then from there on, it was just delivering the options and, yeah. and figuring out which one was the best. We have multiple ones. And then we, I mean, we probably did like eight houses. If you think about the iterations of each one of them. Right. And how they've evolved and, in, 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 you know, for me, it's, it, there was one thing, right? One word that I wanted to just instantly speak to folks that walked through it. And it was the drum, right? So the play on, on textures, colors, contrast. It was kind of like, you know, trying to like an artist, like, you know, black and white. Like they're so very different and yeah. they play off each other. So like on the exterior, that's the direction we went. And then we wanted to bring that on the interior as mm -hmm, well, but mm -hmm. then have some other colors like gold to kind of, you know, off play it. Some folks say it's very bold, black appliances, 100% bold. Yeah. But as long as it's tasteful and you pick the right colors to give you balance and that yeah. contrast, it works every time. So that, that part, again, all of that clarity of purpose and, and playing with it. And I know you have fun even picking the finishes, going to different places right. in Boston and making sure that all of that look good. So, uh, but tell me about the process of building it. I mean, you said you, all you've done was flips. Yep. yep. We have full guts, things like that. You didn't have to deal with foundations right. and full framing of a whole building, okay. exterior framing. Yeah. So how was that? How was that for you? Yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess I wasn't as concise, right? So this wasn't my first new construction project. That would be absolutely like insane to try to jump out and build, you know, a five lot subdivision for your first new construction project. So I originally started doing the fix and flips. Then I migrated to new construction. Mm -hmm. The first house I ever built was 73 Andover Street in Peabody. Um, that had some limitations, conservation, need to get a zoning board. Uh, variance from the Z ZBA. Mm -hmm. um, so went through all that, got familiar with the boards. I remember the you did call me about that project early on, but right. then, you know, I, again, I probably I wasn't even ready. I went to New Hampshire. I wasn't probably even ready for it. Again, <laughs> you have to be ready for the opportunity. When That's the opportunity right. comes, you have to be ready. That's right. So that when you went and got some drawings from New Hampshire and things like that. So that was, that was good. That was the relationship that I cultivated. It was good to work with them. Um, you know, but that, that's kind of where, where I got my feet wet. And I'm like, all right, you can fix and flip, but there's tons of unknowns. 
new construction kind of runs itself. And it's if you can align yourself with an architect that feels comfortable and confident in your execution in the field, then it's a marriage that's, you know, well in the last. Yeah, because you were fixed to what they already had on their right. plate, right? right? It was like a catalog of plans. Right. And some people talk to me about, well, the speed of building something that's either prefab or the drawings are like a catalog. Right. I was like, well, you don't have, you don't have any say. Really, you don't, right? right? Um, in this one, for instance, you had all the freedom of everything. Yeah. Not only dress it up and make it the colors you want, right. every space has its own vision, its own purpose, and it's, it's, it's thought out, right? So that, that was that, that's the, the markup, that's the defining moment. That's the thing that when you walk into this house, you say, wow, this is just cut out different. This is just a different breed. So that's, that's what you get through every single aspect of the space. Um, and that's what uh, you get from working with, you know, a, a great team. I'm not trying to give myself a pat on the shoulder, but Yvonne was super patient. And Julio have been super patient throughout the whole process um, and flexible. Yeah, and you guys yeah. have a way of working and we yeah. kind of flow together. I mean, right. that's the name, flow, right? So we try to, we flow together. You're like, five minutes, Zoom call real quick. Yeah, let's jump on. We jump on, we get it done. You know, so it was, you guys were super involved to know what you really wanted and what you didn't want. Um, so, but the construction part, so yes, going yes, on yes, the yes. details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's all about relationships. The relationship I created with Flo is the same thing. That, and that's one of my strengths, right? So that's it's right. understanding people, knowing how to push, knowing how to pull back when you need to. But we're all working for a cause and we're working to a destination. So I align myself with some subs that understand me and they understand I know this construction necessarily, you know, at a high level, right? So this is the vision. This is where we're going. Can you get in budget? Can you run the job when I'm there and when I'm not there? Is it still the same level of execution? If so, you could be a part of the team and let's run with it. So these subs I've been using and they travel with me, right? My painter's coming from Salem. You know, I found other guys locally, but some of these uh, relationships I've cultivated over the last five or six years mm -hmm. and the, the end product. Ultimately, I just have the vision. I don't swing hammers. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll come and pick a coffee cup up or something, make sure and check quality control throughout the project. But they're really driving it. And it's really the, the subcontract. So trusting the team that yeah. you've cultivated over time, I, I have noticed, um, you know, not not. You, we are a very tight and small community. Believe it, you know, Massachusetts, right. it's, it, everybody knows everybody. So, so to get to this, I would say this is excellence in residential construction and design yeah. right here, right? So to get to that level, it's a craft. And you got to work on your craft. And you can't go around life just getting people mad at you right, and, right, right. and burning cultivating, yep. cult yeah, burning bridges left and right. So to get to this level where you can build this kind of, you know, I mean, this is, again, masterpieces. You have to, again, little bit, and trust that, that team, Correct. right, that you have. Correct. Same thing with flow. Like, we've trained everybody. We work hard on getting everybody up to speed, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them come from nowhere, like right. from out of nothing, right? Most of us are minorities, right? At the end of the day, that barely even speak English sometimes, like I, Edwin probably doesn't hear That's why I like you guys. That, <laughs> gracias. <laughs> so, um, but you build that and you, you cultivate it and you don't burn any bridges and then you get to the point where you can, you know, now it's like, it's like the song of the elephants on right. jumping on the net. So the net, well, let's see how much we can do. Right. But that vision, man, I mean, you're fearless. Yeah, 100%. You're, you're bold. Like, you, you can't walk. have success in this industry if, you, if you're scared. You know, it you just doesn't. You walk work. right into this. Yeah. We're going to do these houses. I, I'm sometimes like puzzled. Like, how did the financial part work out? We, just, we well, had a conversation. Yeah. You like, take me to lunch and you'll tell me all the details. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. is that what it costs to get? <laughs> I mean, I'll get you to the lunch a date, week. Huh? A week. <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, honey, I'm on a date with somebody, Darius. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so, but you know, you you surrounded yourself with very successful people, surrounded yourself with a team that you can trust, had a bold vision. But I'm still shocked that you said, okay, yeah, we can do these flips, we can do these homes. So let's build our own home, have a street named after us, create a community. And you found exactly what you wanted. Yeah. I mean, that's like the, the book, The Secret, I think, played out 
exactly like that. Just speak it into existence. You know, you want to manifest kind of what you want. Your dreams can really ultimately ultimately be a reality. But if you're scared to go achieve them, you know, then it will never happen. Um, now, again, deals aren't plentiful like they used to be. I think we're going to see a market shift now that these interest rates are rising. You're going to start to see, you know, some property values start to decline, which ultimately will create more opportunity. Um, but to find this when we found it, you know, it really wasn't nothing more but a blessing and, and pure luck, to be honest with you. Yeah, wow. So. Wow, but you were able to find the place, find everything, and you have your in-laws living in the same community. Community so, within so, a community. So you have uh, uh, like a built-in babysitter system there already. Yes, yes. So it's like, yes. it's like great, great, great. So going on the, on the construction, anything that, that you would have done differently, anything that you learned through this experience, like anything yeah. that, you know, we don't have to go into an, an hour long, but maybe we divide this into multiple videos, but, right. um, but like, I just want to know how that process was. So full disclosure, we are the contractors here. <laughs> like we are the GC and team um, that put all of this together. And um, that takes a lot of trust and yes. it takes a lot of courage. Like you said, like knowing that that person is going to get you from point A to from point A to point B right. all the way through. And I, I was involved all in. I'm involved all in, right? right? right all the right. risk and all that. But this has been a painless project for me. A completely painless project in right. every aspect. I don't know what I attribute that to, like right. great plans. Well, the plans needed to be worked out too for the lumber, for the pricing. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what I, I guess this is the team, right? right like that's right. probably what I it mean, is. I kind of talked about this, you know, off, offline. It was just, you know, the house is perfectly and perfect, right? Yeah. Everything's man-made, everything's done with hands, even from the architectural standpoint. So are there some minor tweaks that need to happen in the field? Absolutely. But that's the beauty, right, of a spec build versus building for a customer or a, a building for a homeowner, right? Because the client's not here. The end buyer, whoever we're going to convey this property to, they don't know what originally we were supposed to do and then how we deviated that in the field and on the plans to the final build. So, so they got, this is their perfect product. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, they, they got it. This is you, all they know. You got exactly what you wanted. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, got Exactly, man. So, so, so when it wasn't even deviating from an initial path, it was a fluid, pro creative process. Yeah of taking and putting, and that doesn't end. A lot of people think that it ends when you draw it. Just it doesn't end, flow, it hasn't man. ended yet. Just the flow, like, like the river that. flows, you know, <laughs> it goes where it goes. I like that. So, but any, any major things that you never even told me, like that you never called me about, anything that you that um, you had to deal with during the construction, during the framing, during the like, electrical? Yeah, yeah. Like, so, so, you know, there were some things where, for example, you know, I think uh, Yvonne did uh, like bean pockets, for example, mm -hmm. like in the foundation, which in theory, you know, works out. But if I'm finishing the basement, then that's going to take away from the head height. Right. So uh, consequently, I'm like, that's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. Foundation's already poor. Bean pockets are already in. Probably could have captured that if I was a little bit more thorough looking at the foundation. Plans, you know, I, that, that, that I have to I stop you there. I have yeah. to stop you there. You, you yourself, you're looking at the mistakes you made. And you're humble about it. Yeah. You know, like, uh, there I am, like, from, from when I first met you all the way through now, because I saw you, like, I saw where you started. But if mm -hmm. I had met you now, mm -hmm. I would be like, oh, this guy's just a cocky dude that thinks he's the best. But actually, you are thorough. You know what you know and what you don't know. You seek help where you need it. And you're humble to say, in hindsight, I should have done it this way right. instead. And right. like... Some people are just right and right. And people think I am like that. I'm not like that at all, too. Because right, right. that's the only way you can become successful, fixing the mistakes. So you notice that, you, that those pockets were there and you probably would have Ask thought of that. Yeah. Ask me this. Would it, when I figured out that there was a problem, what do you think I said? I didn't call Darwin. Hey, man, there's a problem here. There's a problem. I said no. And I, every contractor knows this. I'm not about problems. I'm about solutions. That's it. So the first thing I say is, all right. What's the solution? Talk to the framers. So then we just had to raise it up a little bit. You know, when we added, you know, a couple extra sill plates. And that's it. Done. Easy. Easy. easy, easy. That's it. So yeah. that, that's perfect. So that's perfect. So um, I guess, you know, this can go on forever. But, you know, we, we do have a yeah. limited time and limited, limited uh, budget for everything. Right. So um, but we could probably talk more particularly about the spaces now that we're here. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. so we've enjoyed all of this. We've seen all of these. Um, and, and let's, let's walk you through. Let, yeah, let's walk through it. Welcome to Flow Design Architects, a company that works with you for you.